For the last few years, the World Food Programme's Mobile Vulnerability Analysis and Mapping, or MVAM team, has been using remote monitoring tools such as live calls, SMS and IVR to conduct food security surveys. Since our inception, we've continued to add new tools, including our chatbot and free websites, to communicate with affected populations. We're therefore always curious to hear about fresh innovations from new people. With this in mind, we challenged some groups of students from Leiden University in the Netherlands to give us ideas about how to improve our data collection. We set them the following question. How can the World Food Programme best employ broadband internet to estimate food needs in hunger-prone groups and communities in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Honduras and Nepal? The team studied how to improve data collection in these three contexts and produced in-depth reports and presented their findings to us in a short summary presentation. The groups produced some really promising and diverse responses, so we wanted to share them with you. First up were the Food Fighters team. My name is Tuva and I'm talking to you representing the Food Fighters team from Leiden University. When we went into this consultancy project with the MBAM team, we began discussing the need for context-specific approaches. We developed our three C's, uh, what we call it, and it's context specificity, connectivity, and collaboration. And it was from these three points that we tackled this project. We looked into Nepal, Honduras, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And here we looked at the economic situation of each country, their geographic position, whether there's armed conflict going on, Wi-Fi penetration and how widespread that is, uh, literacy rates, as well as the role of gender and age in different societies in these countries. From here, we then tailored our recommendations based on these individualized country reports. In Honduras, we looked at indigenous communities, as they seem to be that group prone to food insecurity in this region. We saw that large minority groups tended to move into the urban areas, where they would be living in towns where they lack basic infrastructure. And here, we saw that when these migration flows happen to urban areas, a lot of families and communities get split up and separated. So we recommend for the MBEM team to set up contact centers, so phone and Wi-Fi connectivity. And here, uh, we thought that this would would create an incentive for an information exchange. So the population would provide the data that the MBAM team needs to be able to look into food insecurity in the region. And in return, this population would be able to use Wi-Fi and phones to get in contact with loved ones. In Nepal, we looked largely on women and uh, the geographical needs of food production and distribution. Here we looked at different apps. So we have a women-based free basics app, which allows for information sharing, provides a support network, and acts as a platform for women's voices. And then we had the geo-mapping app, which would allow for quick responses in emergency situations, as well as long-term data collection by mapping food production and shortages. And this information would be able to be shared throughout the community with local farmers, market, the government, and the World Food Programme. And then we have the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This is a country that has been long, long plagued by continuous conflict. It has experienced chronic food insecurity, suffered from extreme poverty, disease, internal displacement, and remains to be one of the poorest and least developed countries globally. And here we looked at collaboration as the main point because there is so many regions in the DRC which are difficult to reach because of conflicts or geographic position. Here we looked at regionally based NGOs already set up and established in each region, and we recommend the MBAM team to try and create a collaboration with these organizations as their infrastructure is already in place. They have uh, safety regulations already in place. And most importantly, they have already developed relationships with local government organizations and, and the population themselves. It's important to create a platform where you can work with people on the ground, but you do need a, a trusting relationship to be able to build upon that. And through this, it would help the NGOs already in place as they uh, would be able to ignore the data collecting part of their projects. And the MBAM team could focus on that and then provide that for the NGO and vice versa. Then the NGO would provide the MBAM team with things that they need while collecting data. The second team was Connect to Provide. In order to answer the question on how to improve data collection from food insecure areas, the student consultancy team Connect to Provide urges to focus on solving issues of gender inequality, broadband internet access and sustainable development. Connect to Provide advises to focus on long-term solutions, especially by means of education. Additionally, 
collaborations with other ICT for the institutions and governmental organizations are highly recommended. Connect to Provide endorses the establishment or development of already existing community centers, such as schools, that would function as training and education centers on the issues of gender inequality and literacy. Here, specific data on food availability and prices could be directly gathered in combination with measuring growth and weight of children. By using community centers, it is possible to reach more women, overcome illiteracy problems and make use of a stable internet network. In order to transfer the collected data, it is necessary to improve Wi-Fi and MVM systems, including the Entity Registry System, Power over Wi-Fi, GoTenna and Wi-Fi hotspots. It is imperative that these are powered by community-owned renewable energy. These could be, for example, solar panels, micro-hydro power plants, or small wind plants that supply the community centers with the needed energy. The most suitable form of energy and the best available community center should be determined per country and per community, according to the context it takes place in. It is important to further elaborate MVAN systems, as well as the use and development of systems such as ARS, RCS, ENRD and Ferro Bablon. These should be combined with community centers as well as renewable energy to get the best possible outcomes. Connect to Provide suggests to make use of action-oriented partnerships with local governments and organizations to come to the most efficient and rewarding results. Together with the World Food Programme, Connect to Provide fights for a world free from hunger. Finally came the group Creating Access to Food. My name is Tila Sali and it was my great honor to be the team leader of Creating Access to Food. When we first sat down together to discuss how the World Food Program can best utilize broadband technologies to estimate the food needs in hunger-prone areas, we thought about making it all about the community. Because crucial improvements of life situations begin at the community level. That was also the right thread in the recommendations, which build on each other in three steps. Firstly, there is the need for supply of electricity for broadband technologies to be successful. So we found that independent electricity sources at the community or household level is the most viable option, specifically with solar-powered panels and the usage of biogas and digesters. Secondly, once electricity sources are established, one can go on with introducing broadband technology. Through distribution of phones like the Nokia 3310, the World Food Program can easily gather data and facilitate communication that is beneficial for both the data collector and provider. Illiteracy remains a significant obstacle, and we recommend the World Food Program to use and build on a voice-operated chatbot such as Verboice in combination with the standardized emoji language. Thirdly, through the usage of broadband technologies, the World Food Program can more easily promote nutritious and varied foods. Thank you to the students from Leiden University for taking up our challenge. You came up with some great creative ideas about how to improve our data collection.